Hello Grade 11s, we have already learned that investments can grow over time, but they can also decay. Vusi is about to discover how the value of a car depreciates over time. Let's join him and his teacher now. Excellent taste if I may say so. Unfortunately, it's way out of my price range. I'm looking for something smaller to drive to college in every day. Then I have just the car for you. Come this way. That's more like it, but it's still too expensive. Have you considered a second-hand car? We have a wide variety in excellent condition. Please come with me. As we all know, new cars are very expensive, whereas second-hand cars are much cheaper. This is because, like most things we buy, cars start to lose value as soon as we use them. This loss of value is called depreciation. Does that mean I can get a good, reliable second-hand car for much less than a brand new car? Um, I can show you some cars. I think you'll find out excellent value for your money. I don't want something to break down as soon as I buy it. Maybe I should think about it. How did the car to go? Looks as if I can only afford a second-hand car. That's fine. But you'll need to check on this condition very carefully. Also, we have some mathematics that can help you decide on what the value of the car should be. How do we do that? Let's have a look. Let's start with the price of the new car you saw today. It was 80,000 rand new, but suppose it depreciates at 15% per annum. Well, we can work out what it will cost after a year. What do you mean it depreciates by 15% per annum? This just means that the car will be worth 15% less than the 80,000 rand after a year. I think I can work that out. 15% of 80,000, that's 12,000. So the car would have lost 12,000 rand of its value after only one year. That's a lot. It is a lot. This means that the car will only be worth 68,000 rand at the end of the first year. That's too much for me. What will it be worth after two years? Do I have to subtract 12,000 Rand again? That's a good question, but it depends on what kind of depreciation we're using. There are two types of depreciation. One is called simple decay or straight line depreciation, and the other is compound decay or reducing balance depreciation. Hey, you're starting to lose me. Don't worry, we're going to see what each one means. The word decay here is used as the opposite of growth. With simple decay, the amount we subtract each year is a percentage of the original value of the car. So for this car, we would subtract 12,000 rand for every year of the car's age. Isn't this the same as simple interest? Spot on, Lucy. For simple interest or simple growth, you added the same amount of interest for each year. So, your total amount was increasing by the same amount per annum. Now, we're working with the amount that is decreasing each year. So we need to subtract the same amount each year. Now let's use simple DK to work out what the value of the car will be after five years. Okay, but I'm not sure if a five-year-old car is reliable. Well, let's see the numbers first and then you can decide. It helps to use a table to record each new value. To start, the car is worth 80,000 Rand. After one year, it is worth 68,000 Rand. If we subtract 12,000 again from this, we will get its value after two years. That's 56,000 Rand. Let me do the third year. That's 56 minus 12, so it's 44,000 Rand. Then 32,000 after four years, and 20,000 after five years. Great. So if I go back to a car dealer, I'll know that a five-year-old Fiesta is worth 20,000 Rand. If you can find one in good condition, I think I can find the money for that somehow. Well, remember that we use the depreciation rate of 15%. So you'll need to know what the actual depreciation rate is first. I guess I'll have to do a bit of research then. Now let me show you what this would look like on a graph. What type of graph do you think we'll get? I guess it's a straight line, because the amount being subtracted stays the same every time. That's a good conjecture, Bruce. 
Here are the plotted points. We can draw them with a straight line. It has a negative slope. As the x values increase, the y values are decreasing, so the graph slopes down from left to right. Now you can see why this kind of depreciation is also known as a straight line depreciation. Look at the graph. What do you think will happen over the next few years? What will happen to the graph? Surely, we can just extend the straight line? Oh, I see the problem. I will cross the x-axis at some point. Yes, it will. How many years will that take? Let me see. It will be between six and seven years. Right, and what will the car's value be at this point? The car will be worth nothing. Can that be right? Well, that's where we have to remember that the graph is only a model for the situation. It works for the first few years, but cars will always have some value, even when they're ready for the scrap heap. So perhaps the simple DK or the straight line depreciation model is not the best model to use. Let me show you the other type of depreciation I mentioned. We call it compound DK or reducing balance depreciation. In this model, the amount subtracted from the value of the car each year changes. It is a percentage taken off the reduced balance at the end of the previous year. It is not taken off the original value of the car. Let's take another look at your 80,000 rand car and see how a reducing balance will affect its price over five years. We will use a depreciation of 15% per annum again. At the end of the first year, the car's value will still be 68,000 rand as it was for simple DK. To find its value at the end of the second year, we need to work out what 15% of the new amount is. So, I need to take 15% of 68,000 rand because that was the car's value at the end of the first year. That's 10,200. If my calculation is correct, and then I subtract this amount from 68,000, that gives me 57,800. Right. For simple DK, we had quite a bit less than that. It was about 56,000. So compound DK on a reducing balance has not reduced the value of the car by as much as simple DK did. Now let's work out the values for the other years and compare them to the values we calculated using simple DK. I'm going to add a column to the table and label it compound DK. What will the value of the car be in the next three years? For the third year, we take 15% of 57,800. That's 8,670. Subtract this from 57,800, and I get 49,130. Right, now that's for the end of the third year. Let's complete the table for the fourth and the fifth year as well. We're working with large amounts of money, so let's round off the answers to the nearest rand. We'll get 15% of 49,130 is 7,369 rand and 50 cents. Take that away from 49,130 and we get 41,761 to the nearest rand. Then at the end of the fifth year, we take 15% of 41,761. That's 6,264 rand 15 cents. Subtract from the previous year's value, and that's 35,496 to the nearest rand. Hey, that's more than 35,000, more than I can afford. Well, think of it this way, Vusi. Once you have a car, you don't want it to depreciate in value too fast. With this method of calculating depreciation, your car loses less value. The amount you subtract from the value of the car is less each year. This is interesting because it shows that a new car loses the most value in the first year after it's bought. Then, for every following year, it continues to lose value, but not quite as much. So that's like compound growth, isn't it? Right. Except, of course, the values are decreasing, not increasing. So this is compound decay, not compound growth. Okay, now it's all starting to fall into place. Simple DK is the opposite of simple growth, and compound DK is the opposite of compound growth. Yes, that's true. If we plot the points from the table this time, what do you think the graph will look like? I really can't picture it. It's obviously not a straight line because the decreases are getting smaller each year. Well, let's plot the points this time and see what happens. We'll plot them on the same graph we use for the straight line depreciation. As you can see, the points lie on a curve. If we join them up, this is the graph we get. The slope of the graph for compound DK is steeper in the first years, showing a bigger decrease in the value. 
Then the slope is more gradual here, showing a smaller decrease. That was quite interesting and scary. There are formulae that we can use to determine the depreciation of an item and we will cover these in another lesson which you can find on our website where you'll be able to learn even more about finance. While you're at it, why not practice what you have learned by doing the questions in the Finance Growth and Decay task video. Your expensive toys lose value quickly, but that's just the way the car key crumbles. Goodbye.